2022. So a two-time IC champion. He's gotten top eight at NAIC in the past, and he's looking to make another deep run. Starting off 1-0 for both of these players, and Gustavo is playing what well, we're going to see plenty of, that Gardevoir EX. Yeah, absolutely facing off against Blake Ray, who is going to be on Lost Box. And it is going to be the Kyogre build of Lost Box. Yeah. I know we're uh, um, saying that, you know, we're looking to see what's going to come out here and shine in this field because there's so many different iterations of Lost Box. But Blake Ray is rocking with that trusty Kyogre, and we will see how that pays off for him uh, in this matchup. Uh, so, yeah, I'm excited to see this for sure. But again, we have another one of the greats in this game, Gustavo Wada, piloting Gardevoir EX. I mean, that just says a lot, in my opinion. Yeah, absolutely. The fact that the best players in this game have chosen to play this deck for the event, yeah, definitely lets you know how strong it is. Prize cards going out for both of these players. Looks like a super rod for each of them. A couple of energy for Blake Ray could be a little awkward. A Colrus experiment is never something you really want to see in the prize cards, as it is the most important card in your deck. Gustavo on his end, prizing an Iono, which could be a little awkward. It's one of your more important supporters for this matchup, but still has plenty to yeah, it does play uh, four this time, unlike the two lists we saw in our last game in our round one. There's three Iono each in those decks, but Gustavo is rolling with the safe four Iono, and that is going to be very disruptive here. We've talked about how that is a critical card going up against Lost Box decks. If you can disrupt their massive hands, disrupt their strategy, you might be able to take the lead and take the edge in these games, that's sometimes what you need. So we'll see how Blake Gray is able to navigate this matchup here against one of the best players in the game and on stream. Yeah, we're uh, we're gonna have to get into it. Looks like it's gonna be a Kyogre build like you mentioned. So I'm interested to see how it will play out for Blake Gray. Starting things off on Gustavo's end, he's got that new stadium here. That Artisan allowing him to search his deck yes. for a basic Pokemon that doesn't have a rule box and putting it into play. Grabbing Mew is pretty good as he can get off Mysterious Tail immediately. Going to undoubtedly be looking for Battle VIP Pass. Yeah, Artisan, a fantastic stadium card. Um, now that it's in play, though, Blake Ray is also able to utilize that yes. Artisan as well. You know, sharing that stadium between both players. And that's pretty great for Lost Box decks as well because you do have several basic Pokemon without rule boxes that are pretty critical to your deck. So it's going to come out here and be a huge help for Gustavo Wada to be able to do this Mysterious Tale. Turn one, I didn't get a look at the hand for Gustavo, but right now let's just focus on an item card here. It's going to be that Ultra Ball off of the Mysterious Tale into a direct discard of a research here. I didn't see the other card, but going into the deck for another Pokemon. Yeah, it will just be another Ralph. Did whiff on the VIP pass. That's really what you want to see when you use Mysterious Tail turn one, as you can only play that VIP pass turn one, and it is so powerful. Even though Gustavo had that little bit of extra dig for it, was not quite able to find it, but finding this Ultra Ball does mean he can still at least get one more Ralts into play. Pretty underwhelming turn one, though, for Gustavo. Yeah, that is not really exactly where you want to be on the Gardevoir. And we saw some pretty explosive turns from both of our players in our Swiss round one. But Gustavo going a little bit slower, unfortunately, here. And let's see what Blake has on this side of the field now, kicking things off. Started with the Sableye in the active position, but we'll see what else can come down here so far. I think this is the Artisan here? Yeah, yeah using Blake, right? Artisan okay. right away. Going to check the energy cards as well. Blake actually has a ton of energy card in, cards in his hand. I think oh, gosh. Two lightning what? and like two water. Yeah. Jeez. Two Did also prize in the lightning prize. and water. Yeah. Yep. Two in the prize, four in the hand as well. But we're going to see that Comfey come out onto the field here for Blake. That is the engine, or at least one of the engines of the deck, along with Colrus's experiment here. We're going to see some flower selecting to make some decisions, get some cards in the Lost Zone. That's the strategy of this deck going forward. Draw through your deck, piece things together, get uh, four, then seven, then ten cards in the yep. Lost Zone. And that's where Blake is working toward right now here. Radiant Greninja going to come down um, off of this nest ball. I will say it is possible that we see this game almost just end right now. If Blake can get to seven cards in the Lost Zone on this first turn and use Radiant Greninja, 
use that Moonlight Shuriken, take out both the Ralts. The game would basically just be over almost immediately, and he was able to find off this Concealed Cards a Battle VIP pass. I think he's already got a wow. Lost Vacuum in the hand as well, Yo, Boo. Are we going to see it, Chip? That would be absolutely explosive to have in this round, too. I would love to see that. But we'll have to see if Blake Ray can get there. But yeah, this is, you do have the option to use Radiant Greninja when you are playing Lost Box if you play that Water Energy. And that is one of your huge main attackers sometimes in these matchups. And yeah, that could be absolutely debilitating and take a quick game one, which would be awesome. We'll see if Blake Ray can get there. Uh, uh, promoting into that comfy, let's see our first flower selecting. Well, this is a tough choice. Your two wow. recovery cards, Super yeah, those are late and game Energy cards. Recycler. Jeez. Gonna value the Recycler a little bit more at this point. Yeah, the, the hand is stalling out just a little bit here. Blake really needs to find a Colris. Yes. All right, here we go. Flower selecting another lost vacuum and that Kyogre, though. What is interesting about this is with a stadium card in the hand and with a second lost vacuum, you can get a lot more cards in the lost zone. Looks like it mm. will just be the lost vacuum being ditched. Wants to keep the option of Kyogre hanging yeah. around. I yeah. think we're going to be spinning the wheel with the Pokestop. It's a little less risky now. There's no Clara in this list. It's reliant on Super Odd now, which is pretty nice. So you don't have to risk losing quite as much. All right, here we go. It is going to be a third flower selecting here. It's a Battle VIP pass and a Water Energy. Debating which one to take. It was the Battle VIP going in there, and that's going to be the choice here for Blake, keeping that Water Energy. And that's another Energy going into the hand. So probably not going to hit an Energy, oh. right? Oh, no. But that is something you do not want to hit. Your Colrus's experiment, you want them in your hands, not in the discard pile. Yeah, and this is going to be a miss on the attack here now from Blake. There's no mm. option to get the Cramorant. He's already retreated for the turn, so we'll just be a pass. Gustavo can breathe a sigh of relief. Blake was honestly not Jeez. too far off yeah. from getting the Moonlight Shirk, and you can see just one or two more options, and he gets there. Gustavo choosing to use the Pokestop himself. There you go. Having to discard it there off of that. Did hit the Ultra Ball, which can now just get one more Pokemon. Wasn't too bad of a discard, though. Ditching the collapsed. You know, it's kind of nice to keep nope. around, but you don't mind discarding the energy. You want those in the discard well, pile. Well, yeah, and the tough thing, too, about Blake having to discard the Colrus is one is in the prize cards as well. So that's just another yeah, Colrus's experiment down, and that's going to slow things down a lot that's or, true. you know, feed into some sticky situations potentially in the late game here as well for Blake down the line because there's only two Colrus in deck now. But we'll see what Gustavo has. Hopefully a little bit better of a second turn here now. Uh, Carlia has been evolved into, and we've just been grinding through this deck here on Gustavo's side of the field. Going to use this Fog Crystal, thin a card out, grabbing another Ralts here. I think if Gustavo could, he'd like to pull off a Moonglow Reverse play this turn. In order to do that, though, he's going to need to find a Gardevoir EX and a Rare Candy, which is a little bit difficult to get. I think he did draw the Gardevoir here. Let's see if he can find a rare candy, actually. Yeah, that would be huge. I we'll don't see. think so. We have the Mysterious Tail here for an item card. Going to just get that Fog Crystal off of there. So this is the matchup I'm probably most interested to follow throughout the course of the event, yes, right? It's one of the big stories, Lost Box versus Gardevoir. Traditionally, in the last format, Lost Box had a very good Gardevoir matchup. But now with Iono, is it really enough to, uh, to fight back against this matchup that otherwise would be so difficult? We'll have to see what happens. Yeah, that is the great debate that has been going on throughout the community for sure. You know, what is considered to be BDIF? Is it hard? Uh, for sure, Gardevoir, or does Lost Box still survive in this matchup? And we're going to no, be able to see it play out here. No Manaphy in play for Gustavo. I'm a little interested and oh, surprised wow. to see that. And Blake the bench having is full. Another opportunity here to go for the Radiant Greninja play. And does find a Colrus off concealed cards. Wow, very nice. Like we said, there's only two in the deck here, so finding that is huge here for Blake. Now going to be able to stack even more cards into the Lost Zone here for Blake, keeping three to the hand, and two of these cards are going to go into the Lost Zone. So yeah. difficult decisions that you have to make, but you also get access to a lot of cards that you need to pull off these incredible strategies that Lost Box present you. Yeah, I think he's got it here. With five cards in the Lost Zone now, he's got Lost Vacuum in hand. He also hasn't even used Flower Selecting yet. So Plenty. we are going to see Greninja 
come out this turn, targeting down a Curlia and likely a Ralts as well. Yeah, but there's still a ton of energy in the hand, right, for Blake? There is, but remember, he did take Energy Recycler earlier. Mm, true. So he should true. have the option to, even if he's only putting back one or two Energy cards, he yeah. should still have the option to get off the play, which it definitely would be worth it in this spot. Yeah, it can sometimes be pretty awkward if your energy's not in deck to mm -hmm. be searched out with, but as long as you can get them in the deck somehow, you are coasting here. We're going to see the escape rope here. Gustavo has to promote first on this escape rope. And of course, Blake is just going to hop into another Kumpe, into another flower selecting here. It's going to be the four seal stone and a sable eye as well. Second sable eye. Yeah, this is kind of tough because he chose to discard his, or lost on his other four seal stone. Now, if you lost on the second one, you know you're not going to get to use it at all this game. You only play two, but it's definitely better to lose that than lose your sable eye. So yeah. it's a little annoying. you got to kind of sigh and just send that four seal stone to the lost zone. Oh, well, that's an easy choice there. Manaphy or Colrus's experiment, and it's going to be that Colrus into the hand here. So that is all the Colrus's experiments that we have now in Blake Ray's hand. And you see now how this deck works. You just stack up a huge hand here. So many cards to work with. Uh, and that allows you to play out your strategy, line up your attackers, and start taking knockouts with this incredible, you know, one prize version of this deck. We do see Pokestop now adding one, a couple more item cards to the hand. I say one more because Battle VIP Pass doesn't really count. <laughs> True. <laughs> and is going to just get sent to the Lost Zone now through the Lost Vacuum. We're actually at 10 cards in the Lost Zone now. Forget Greninja. Whoa. Let's go with that Sableye. Here we go. Sableye coming in with that Lost I'm Mine. Not going to lie, though. I'm a little surprised to see that. I think it would be a little bit stronger for Blake if he had Manaphy's gone for the Greninja. Down? Yeah, with yeah. no Manaphy in play. Cresselia is less of a threat when your opponent has less Psychic Pokemon in play, and do you really care about them taking one prize if you're targeting down both a Curlia and a Ralts? This is just giving Gustavo an opportunity to get Gardevoirs into play. Yeah, that is very true. And, and another opportunity to get Manaphy yes, down. Yes, Manaphy's in hand as well for Gustavo as well. So going with Sableye instead of the Radiant Greninja, interesting play here from Plague. We'll see if this strategy chosen pays off in the end here. But Gustavo Wada, like you said, has a lot of a lot more openings now here now that that Radiant Greninja is still hanging out on the bench with no water energy attached, I mean, Curlia. The Cresselia is so good in this matchup for Gardevoir. I mean, it's got to 120 it HP. Is. It's a little annoying to KO. You pretty much have to KO it with Sableye at some point. But I just have to think, if you target down the draw power of this deck, Gustavo's deck is so much weaker. I have True. to really wonder why Blake wouldn't go for that Greninja when he could. Yeah, and now the Manaphy is going to be down here on Gustavo's side of the field. So that's one more obstacle Blake has to work through um, for these future plays. If we're going to see some Radiant Greninja plays happen, because that Wave Veil is now protecting the bench here for Gustavo Wada. Very important card there. And this is a pretty interesting play as well for Gustavo, just making the call that he doesn't think Blake plays Drapion V, or <sighs> it would at least be difficult for Blake to get to the Drapion V this turn. Uh, so going with the Gardevoir, it has a lot of HP. It's pretty difficult to KO, and Blake does have his Dragonite down in the discard pile. That would be his other way to respond True. to this since it has six damage counters on it. So, yeah, just maybe taking the risk here. Um, yeah, Blake does not play Drapion uh, in deck, so... There we go. We're just going to see that Gardevoir take a knockout here. Of course, that the damage counter is being put on there with that Psychic Embrace as well. And we'll see what Blake chooses to do here. Getting a look at the prize cards, uh, thanks to that Hisuian Heavy Ball there. Not... Uh, yeah, choosing not yeah, to take the Yeah, I was about to say, not taking the Kumpfe out there. Um, just going to discard the Hisuian Heavy Ball instead, keeping that Kumpfe in the prize cards. That's interesting. And then we're going to see um, Concealed Cards has already been used, and now we're seeing the first flower selecting here for Blake. It does have either Pokestop or Super Odd to take. I think Super Odd seems strong. He does have another one, and he does play four copies of the card. Going with the Escape Rope now. All right, so we're in the same position. Gustavo has to promote a Pokemon first. Blake is going to bring up another Comfey into another flower selecting. Going to be that Mirage, Gate, and a Nest Ball here. So where do you think Blake goes from here, Chip? Yeah, I think with the Kyogre in the deck, that's really what he's playing to at that, this point. And that's probably, I guess, why he didn't go for the Greninja play, is he wants to hold True. off on using a Recycler too early. But I don't know. If it was me, I mean, that play is just too tempting. You'd be taking it. <laughs> yeah, I'm taking those prizes for sure. Uh, yeah. um, 
And yeah. you still have another recycler to work with and all the super rods. So. I kind of agree with you on that, though, because if you're able to kind of debilitate your opponent's deck yeah. early on, then they are not as able to find those pieces to win the game in the late game. Yeah, and this so. will happen with people playing Kyogre sometimes. Is like they just think, I've got to keep these resources around for Kyogre, but you don't have to, to use laser it focus. every single game. Yeah, but I'm not saying that's necessarily what's happening here. Um, as Blake is still Central. turning through the deck. Oh, this is so tough, though. It's another Mirage Gate. He just hit one on his last flower selecting, Ooh. chose to keep it over a Nest Ball. Now has to choose, does he keep a Switch card or does he keep this last Mirage Gate? There's one in the Lost Zone already, one in the discard pile. I think he has to keep it, even though yeah. he's using a switch card, which would be really good. Yeah, that would be really good indeed, but it's going to be the switch card added into the loss zone here. Plenty of cards in there just kind of clumped on the edge there. Don't worry about those. They're gone forever, at least for this game for Blake Ray. Uh, kind of a head shake there, maybe frustrated at the, what the uh, the options have had to have been so far in this game here. Just going to take a quick look through what has already been Lost Zone. It is so important to keep track of all your resources when you're playing Lost Box because that filters into your strategy throughout the rest of this game. Both these players are tied, having taken one prize card each so far in the Swiss round two. And we'll see which way things start to turn here now that uh, Blake just has to pass over to Gustavo Wada. Yeah, Blake did have Super Odd in hand, so could have used Super Odd, gotten back Sableye, used Mirage Gate to get down a Psychic Energy on a Sableye and get off and attack that turn. Really just choosing to conserve these resources, though. I mean, it's tough to use that Mirage Gate when you know you're now only going to have one left. So yeah. you got to wonder what play he's building towards, though, is the question. Yeah, because if you if you uh, let Gardevoir go on for too long, it is like a uh, a train, really. Yeah. It just keeps chugging along yeah. until it eventually runs you over, pretty much. Uh, here we go for Gustavo Wada using that Mysterious Tail to get a Super Rod out of the deck here. And it's just going to go straight into using it, shuffling back three Pokemon into the deck here as well. And using Rare Candy yeah. right away to get this Cresselia. I mean... Like we mentioned, it is a strong card in this matchup specifically. Annoying to KO, and it can pretty easily take KOs and at the same time heal your board. Huge threat there on the field for sure. I mean, that's why we saw Blake take it out already. And uh-oh, the nightmare is back. It's coming back to the field here for Gustavo, and it is going to be promoted into the active now. Yep, using that Psychic Embrace, spreading Very nice. these energy cards, spreading the damage counters, which are inevitably going to be healed off. And the nice thing is, as well, is he doesn't even have to spread his energy cards too thin. Yep. He can use the Mew to retreat. He's already got damage on the Gardevoir. And healing this Gardevoir is actually super key right now because it now takes it out of range of a 5 energy Aqua Storm. It also takes it out of range of Dragonite getting the KO on it. And now Blake, off this Flower Selecting, sees an energy and a Kyogre. Has to wonder if, uh, I feel like at this point, Kyogre's your only way back into this. He was debating Lost Zoning it. I think at this point, yeah, what else do you do? Now. Yeah. <laughs> oh my oh, gosh, he's Lost Zone the Kyogre here. Blake Ray, what, what is the strategy here that we're missing here, Chip? No, we're going to just this see point, the concealed cards. Yeah, he's probably going to try to KO the Manaphy at some point. Gustavo is down yeah. a Super Rod now, so KO the Manaphy and then try to work in your Greninja. And use that to try to close out the game, most likely. You can't spread your damage too wide, though, as then Cresselia just gets to move yeah. a little reverse. Well, and this is, yeah, this is where things get very awkward when you're putting, like, half your deck um, into the Lost Zone. You're working with so many less resources, and you just have to adapt on the fly and re-strategize every single one of your turns. Meanwhile, Gustavo has not let up on the pressure whatsoever. That board just continues yep. to develop. And at what point is it just going to stack up too much to go against Blake is the question at hand right now. Yeah, I mean, Gustavo is just setting up super nicely. I mean, he's going to keep using this Cresselia as long as it's hanging around, I think. Yeah, right? so Blake definitely. now is feeling the pressure to respond to it. It's what he was trying to do earlier when he KO'd it so that he wouldn't have to deal with the Moonglow Reverse, just and deal with back. it when he could, and <laughs> Gustavo was just able to get it back. Yeah, and I mean, that's pretty common when you see these Super Rods, Blake using his own Super Rod. It's just such a powerful card that we now have in our format. A fantastic conclusion from Paldea Vault here. 
that we get to add into these decks. So we're going to see that Raikou V come down onto the field. Mirage Gate is going to attach a, an electric energy or lightning energy to that Raikou and a psychic onto the active Comfey for retreat here. Yeah, the, I mean, this is a little bit more difficult for Gustavo to respond with. He pretty much has to do it with a Shining Arcana Gardevoir. Miracle Force on the Gardevoir EX only deals 190, yeah. so Raikou can hang on. So Gustavo is going to have to establish that Pokemon. Yeah, and always nice, too, getting an additional fleet footed in there as yep, well. Just yep. an additional draw there for Blake. Going to take the knockout again on that Cresselia KO here on the field. Blake Ray going down to four prize cards left to take between both of these players here. On Gustavo's side, we're starting off with, uh, what, three, six cards, five or six cards in hand here. He's got a few to work with, a couple of them being Iono. I think that's where he's, well, he's actually choosing to maybe refinement first. Uh, yeah. Might not want to go with Iono. Maybe he's thinking of something else this turn. <laughs> Let's find that Shining Arcana Gardevoir now. Yes. Yeah. So we see that first um, refinement. And mm -hmm. then, yeah, that Shining Arcana Gardevoir is going to join us on the field here. Yeah, it does have a couple of bosses' orders in hand, but I. I mean, maybe if he wants to attack with the Gardevoir EX this turn, that's what he's going with, potentially. Uh, but it will still just end up being this Iono. Yeah, all right, so we're going to see the Iono. So both players are even in prize cards, but that also means that your hand that you have is going to the bottom of your deck as well. So offering the cut here, potentially, for both of these players. And then they're going to draw into four cards each. Horus's experiment was drawn... Um, off of that, I don't know, for Blake's side of the field. So that's great to have. Um, and yeah, let's see where Gustavo goes with this. I don't know if there's anything else being played from hand here. It's just going to be the Shining Arcana. Gardevoir, join us in the active position here. We're going to see that Psychic Embrace yep. with those three energy being uh, put onto the field here from the discard pile. And this will be enough to take out this Raikou. Take two prizes. Gustavo going down to just two prizes remaining. Blake can pick up a KO on this active pretty yeah. reasonably uh, with the Cramorant as an option, with Sableye as an option as well. So he's got a few plays available. All right, here we go. Another knockout on the field here. Gustavo Wada closing out this game now. It is getting down to the wire here. We only have just under 30 minutes left on the clock so far here. And what, what are the choices here for Blake from here, Chip? Yeah, so it's 60 damage on the Gardevoir. It's got 80 HP remaining, so you can place, you know, the 8 there, and then you have 4 with Sableye to place elsewhere. You can maybe put 4 on the Mew so that it's something that can't be Psychic Embraced onto any longer, and then you can maybe try to pick that off later. The problem is, is Gustavo only has two prizes left, so yeah. really what Blake has to do would be take two prizes this turn, take two prizes next turn. And I don't think that that is going to be possible with the way that the damage is lined up on the board. If he had Kyogre hanging around still, that maybe True. could be a way he could do it. You know, if he was able to drop all the damage on the man, if he to KO it, put the rest on the Gardevoir EX, and then next turn go for a Kyogre play where you're milling enough to knock out the Gardevoir and a one-prize Pokemon, and Gustavo wasn't able to get back the Manaphy, of course. <laughs> so many um, options, yeah. So, I mean, I really don't think, I don't know, it's tough. Blake did end up having to lose that Kyogre over the water energy. I think mm -hmm. at that point, though, Kyogre was really his only way back into this. Yeah, and that is unfortunate for sure. It's been uh, an unfortunate turn of events, definitely, from Blake's sides. And it could have started out so explosive, and honestly, was so close to it as well. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, just could not get there in the early game. We're going to see Super Rod being played here now. This can be a combination of Pokemon or basic energy up to three that you can recycle back into your deck. So Blake just making those choices here, making sure to line everything up, all the energy needed to go back into that deck for future turns. Yeah, maybe his thinking, his best play is to try to use the Dragon Knight here. It's something with more HP. Maybe Gustavo misses a KO on it. And if Gustavo does miss a KO these next couple turns, there's a path for Blake to come back in. Then the problem is, is that Gustavo can one hit KO the Dragon Knight for yes. two prizes to win the game if he has the pieces. And then also, even if he doesn't, he can still just Cresselia or Boss for one prize and then do the other one the next turn. So I think this one is looking pretty tough for Blake to find a way. I would 
definitely give like a 99% win chance to <laughs> Gustavo right now. I think we're in territories where Blake should consider conceding uh, for time reasons, but we're going to stick it out. That, that's the thing about Lost Box. It's so powerful. You always feel like you have a chance, and uh, that's, that's I think what Blake is leaning towards here, feeling like he has a chance. Yeah, wanting to play this out is what it looks like is going on here. So we see the attachment there. It's not comfy to be able to retreat out into the Sableye. We're going to see a Lost Mine here. Blake just deciding where to put these damage counters. 12 damage counters to deal with here for Blake Ray. Looks like we will be targeting down the Curly and knocking that out. So eight damage counters there. That means there are four remaining to be placed elsewhere. Not dealing with this active. It looks like two going on to the Gardevoir and two on to the active Gardevoir as well. So two on Gardevoir EX, two on the active. Yep, those damage counters uh, being able to take some knockouts here. Damage counters, of course, are dip is different than damage. So that mana feed does not protect right from those damage counters being placed with Sableye. Very important differentiation to make. I will say as Gustavo here, I would maybe be a little psyched out about there being a second Kyogre. <laughs> That's kind of what it seems like Blake is setting up with the damage <laughs> Yo, placement. True, but true. I mean, you still have your Manaphy in play, right? Maybe if, if Blake had gone knockout Manaphy plus put the damage yeah. on the Gardevoir, you would think that. Um, yeah, it, it's, just, it's just looking tough here. I think... Uh, Blake's play is maybe going to be to try to, like, kill the Gardevoir EX. I don't even think Blake is playing bosses orders. Yeah, he's got no boss in this list, so there's not even a way to deal with this that you've just put 20 damage on on the bench. It's traditional loss box. Yeah. Very traditional indeed. All right, we're going to just see another knockout here for Gustavo Wada. That is almost wrapping things up. Your only one prize card left to take in this game one of our Swiss round two. We're over on Blake's side. There's still damage counters out on the field. Yep, uses but. flower selecting to just get to draw that card. That's how it works. If you've got just one card left in deck, you get to just put it into your hand. You don't have to loss zone anything, but That's Blake nice. sees that he can't win concedes this one we're going to game two we are going to game two with 25 minutes and that's before shuffling and resetting of the field so it's going to be even less than that to conclude a game two and this is again chip we've been talking about this the whole time where things get dicey because you're essentially playing a best of one if you cannot conclude a game two and that's just going to go to whoever won the first match of course, you're now just playing for the tie if you're Blake Ray here because there's no way you're going to be able to conclude a game three unless there's some sort of wild things that happen, which, I mean, I've seen it before, but it's, yeah, it's pretty mean, uncommon. I think it's more likely in a matchup like this compared to the Gardevoir Mirror where it's, like, totally reasonable for Gustavo to have another start similar to what he did, and then Blake can pop off and get the, the Radiant Greninja. Greninja. And if he does that, he gets really ahead on the prize race. He's going to be able to close out the game in probably just a couple turns. Well, and that, that's what I'm wondering, because he didn't do it last game, so will he just readjust the strategy to focusing on yeah, that in that, the early game? That's an adjustment I'd like to see make. I think Blake had that in his mind when he saw his opening hand. He saw he had the vacuum. Yeah, he true. had the stadium. Um, was able to get a bunch of Pokemon in play after using concealed cards. I think that was in his mind, right? I'm really close to getting off the turn one. Radio so Greninja. close. Didn't quite get there. He did end with three cards in the loss zone, but he had a few other things. If he just finds a Colrus, he's got the loss vacuum. So that really is all he needed was finding a Colrus. Well, let's hope to see a quick conclusion to this game two, because then we're going to go into a game three, and that, that would be extremely exciting as well to see where that ends up. And hopefully uh, we get to see some nice conclusions here. Oh, it's nice to see. I mean, I mean, ties aren't as, you know, exciting to watch on stream. So it'd be nice to see uh, what can happen here. But yeah, as you said, Chip, I'd love to see Blake be uh, as aggressive as possible. And that was definitely in mind there from the plays we were seeing, but was just not able to get there in that game one that we saw between these players. After that, though, I feel like things progressively just tumbled into worse and worse for Blake. Was it just the draw of the cards or do you think it was just going with the wrong strategy for the time. Yeah, maybe a little of both. It's hard to know for sure. Um, you know, the mind of a Lost Fox player is a, uh, a mysterious thing, we can say. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It takes a, a very skilled player to play Lost Fox um, and to, to play it with confidence, for sure. I would never be able to play a Lost Fox deck, that's for sure. I know you play him, Chip. 
I, I have played it at Milwaukee Regionals, so I had some experience there. Blake here with the nest ball has a choice, either get a Comfey and try to get off of Flower Selecting or get Radiant Greninja down and try to conceal the cards. And I think you probably lean towards Radiant Greninja in a spot like this. Yeah. Um, just try to hope to, to get a little bit more set up. It is a tough call, though, and I've, I've been in this spot before where your hand is not the best. I think Blake's got a couple energy. He's got a Kyogre in his hand, which is not good right now, obviously. Started the Raikou. Started the Raikou, yeah. yeah. Already fleet-footed, I think, off the Raikou as well. Did, yep. So, yeah, just have to choose, pick and choose what to do here. And it looks like having some difficulty making that choice, but it's going to yeah. be the Comfey that comes down. I think this makes sense, too. I mean, he only had one energy card in hand, so if he uses concealed cards, he's not guaranteed to be able to use it next turn. True. If he at least uses Comfey this turn, he gets a card in the loss zone, which means now in order to at least attack a Cramorant, he only needs to get three in the loss zone next turn. Yeah, absolutely. Blake, of course, is going first here in this match, so no supporters can be played. Ooh. There are... Ooh. Very nice. Yeah, that the is VIP very pass. good. Very good. That's definitely what you want to see early game to get these Pokemon out to accelerate your early turn setup here. Get as many cards as possible into Lost Zone as you possibly can. And start stacking up a hand. Two Colrus's experiment were already in the hand for Blake yep. for future turns. But you never know what's going to happen here with Gustavo Wada having four Iono as well in the deck. Yeah, and Blake, you, we can see, is being a little bit quicker here. He didn't spend as much time checking his energy cards as he did in the last game. Kind of surprised to see that he didn't conceal cards that energy because he doesn't have another one. Just passed. Yeah, I think I would have liked to have seen concealed cards ditch the energy, and then if you find a switch card, you can get off another Comfey. If you sure. find a switch card or an energy, you can get off another Comfey because he hasn't manually retreated yet. But yeah. does just choose to retreat, flower selecting, gets one more in the loss zone, and now it is Gustavo's turn. Playing this level ball, probably looking for the Mew, but we know it's not there. Yeah, that is unfortunate, but that's what happens when you only have a copy of one card in your deck, unless you have that Hisuian Heavy Ball, and it's a basic Pokemon to get it out. You, uh, you're not going to have access to it, unfortunately. But Gustavo still looking through the deck yep. to see what else is in the prize cards. Um, he, he did also prize two Battle VIP Pass, so it's oh yeah, a, a lot less likely he's going to find one this turn. The fact that he doesn't have Mew and he prized two VIP Pass makes it pretty low odds to, to get a bunch of basics in play this turn. But he does at least have a couple level ball, it looks like. Yep, also prizes Zacian via Anna Curlia as well. So, yeah, there's a lot Quite of Pokemon, Pokemon in there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, we'll see. But Ralts are going to join us here onto the field. It's going to be three so far here for Gustavo. And, I mean, I'm sure Gustavo is well aware of those prize cards as well after taking a nice, good look through the deck here. So, really going to have to play this out and hope to take a win here. Does not want a tie whatsoever. Yeah, he's actually got a ton of Pokemon. This is a uh, overall pretty good hand, to be honest. He's able to get the four Ralts. He's able to get Manaphy and hits Blake with an Iono. And Gustavo has no way of knowing it, but this Iono is actually putting two Colors yes. Experiment onto the bottom of the deck for Blake. Yeah, that was a very, very good Iono. Uh, and yeah, exactly like you said, Gustavo doesn't know what's in the hand, but it was a very large hand, though, for Blake. So... Yeah, as if you can limit your opponents, you want to do that. And, of course, draw into your own cards as well. That is a huge thing to do here. And, yeah, like you said, Chip, Manaphy is down now. We're even filling up the bench completely here with the inclusion of that Radiant Greninja joining the field as well for some potential concealed cards here for Gustavo to start lining things up. Yeah, the only thing I don't like for Gustavo here is that he doesn't have a bench space for the Cresselia, such an important card in this matchup. But... Getting four Ralts in play is still pretty good. Pretty good indeed. All Ralts on the field here. All right, so we're just going to see. Um, oh, so, yeah, it looks like it was uh, a... teleportation burst there on the Ralts. Ten damage, switch it to the bench, and just send up this other Ralts. You teleport. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it is. Some we don't get to see all the time, but it's always cute when the Ralts come out and do a little damage. Honestly, the 10 damage can be actually really relevant in some matchups too, for sure. So here we go. We're on Blake Ray's side of the field, stacking more cards into the loss zone here. We're up to three a Sableye being uh, put into that loss zone. Yeah, I think Blake wants to use Cramorant most likely this turn. Does find a Colrus, so that's pretty fortunate. He had four Sealstone in hand, so could have still found one most likely this turn. 
uh, but is able to at least see a few more cards here on this course. I think we're probably going to see a Cramorant hitting the active Ralts for a knockout. That's the play I'd be looking to go for at least, and I think that's why we uh, are seeing the Sableye hit the Lost Zone. He yeah. wanted to keep that Nest Ball so that he can make sure he gets that Cramorant into play. Yep, deciding on the second card here now to add into the Lost Zone here for Blake. Going to be that Escape Rope joined by the four seal stone off of that Colrus's experiment. So chose to keep the Iono in the hands, a couple more cards as well. Does have another four seal stone already in the hand as well. Yeah, and what's nice in this matchup is most guard of our lists do not play any tool removal. So there's no lost vacuum most likely on Gustavo's end. So uh, four seal stone kind of becomes an anti Iono card. You get to put it into play on your Pokemon V and then even if you get Iono, you can use that four seal stone to get you whatever piece you need. Yeah, that is huge indeed. You feel a lot safer playing it, knowing the traditional Gardevoir list for sure. We're going in with a Nest Ball here from Blake. Just putting a uh, counter here on the yep. Lost Zone so that we're all caught up on the stream here with how many cards are in the Lost Zone. There's six so far. Uh, of course, that Crammer is well able to attack for free now with that Spit Innocently thanks to its ability, its Lost Provisions. Yep, we'll be able to get the knockout on this Ralts, targeting the draw power, targeting the main attackers of Gustavo's deck. Killing Ralts just does so much for you. Attach Retreat, save the switch cards. That seems pretty strong to me. And Spit Innocently takes a prize. Blake Ray strikes go. first in game two. Strikes game, er, first in game two here. Ralts going to the discard pile for Gustavo's side, but there's already three Ralts out on the field, so there's still a lot of Ralts action happening here for Gustavo Guada, and that hand is pretty big right yeah. now, so there's a lot to deal with for, for this turn. Yeah, if Gustavo, I think his best play, or what he's looking to do, is to get a Rare Candy, Gardevoir EX, and Cresselia. Take a Moon Glow Reverse KO on the bench. He doesn't have any of those pieces in his hand right yeah. now, and he doesn't even have a draw supporter available just yet. Yeah, that is definitely a little awkward indeed. We're just going to see that boss's orders to bring up that Radiant Greninja into the active position. Yeah, I think he already used concealed cards. I saw him just use the refinement. He must have used oh, concealed yeah. cards really quickly to start the turn as well. So Just didn't rotate the card. Yeah, maybe. just doesn't have much going on. Teleportation burst into the Greninja. This Ooh, is tough. Uh, yeah. Blake, now Blake, if I'm Blake, I, I'm definitely looking for an escape rope here. <laughs> you yeah, can't true. KO the active with a cream ranch, but if you can escape rope. If only you could just snag that one that's on the top I of know. the lost zone, <laughs> but you definitely cannot do that. Once they're in the lost zone, they are gone forever. So Blake is going to have to find some other way to pivot here. Does have Pokestop in hand, so you could use that to try to find the true. escape rope. Could switch cart into a... Oh. Comfe to start with, try to see what else he finds, see what develops. There is a Colrus, that's pretty good. That's does nice. come at the cost of losing an energy recycler. Um, oh, he does just play one energy recycler, so that is why he's debating keeping it here, I think. Oh, so he could try gone. to Kyogre later. But it's he does gone. still have four super odds. Still has four super odds, True. so I think losing the one recycler is okay. Yeah, of course, that switch cart healing the damage off of that rating for Ninja 2. Always. Very nice inclusion there. All right, we're seeing a Colrus's experiment now for Blake Ray, adding some more cards into the Lost Zone here. It's going to be another um, switch cards yep, being added up, into there. Up to nine now. It looks like he does have escape rope, so that's the piece to uh, try to get a KO with the Cramorant here. Sableye is pretty strong, too, if he can get there. He just needs one more card in the Lost Zone, like you mentioned. And he should be able to get that through Forest Seal Stone and Lost Vacuum. Yep, we're going to get there. 10 in the Lost Zone is what you're aiming for to unlock that Lost Mine on the Sableye. That is the real key to your deck here. That Sableye does a lot of work with those damage counters. Completely dodges the Mana Fee that is already out for Gustavo and bypasses that completely to be able to play some damage counters, get some knockouts, and start lining up these prize cards to hopefully take a win here in this game to 13 minutes left on the clock with both of these players. Yeah, time definitely needs to start becoming a factor in these players' minds. Need to be thinking about how much time is left, how much time you're taking to make each of these decisions because uh, it really does tick away at this point. Yeah, and maybe at this point, you know, Blake is recognizing, okay, I cannot win this series, but I can win this game. So let yeah. me just make sure I take enough time to 
think through my actions, win this game, lock it up, and come away with one match point at least. Yeah, definitely looking to take the tie for sure versus a loss, definitely. Pokestop is going to come into play now here. Or actually, sorry, I think it was off of the Colrus. It's going into the loss zone now. Um, just played it like it was a stadium. But yep. yeah, now we're good to go. That loss zone is fully loaded up now with plenty of cards. For that lost mine, all you need is a Psychic Energy, and Blake Ray has it here. So we'll finally see some damage counters being able to take some knockouts here on the field. Going to take a Curlia out of play here. Manaphy's going to get two, and that Ralts on the bench also getting two damage counters out of the total of 12. Yeah, and I mean, Blake knows that Gustavo's hand is not very good at this point, that he is going to need some help here uh, to get back in this. And Gustavo was able to, off of this concealed cards, find an Iono, and if there's a way to get back in a game, it's definitely Iono. Oh, yeah, one of our favorite supporters here. Until we say it 12 billion times. <laughs> <laughs> Iono here uh, being used. So we're going to see... Gustavo Wada draw four. into a full set of six cards here. Oh, he does not find the rare candy. Does not find a Curlia even. No. This is the most wow. bricking I think we've seen from Gardevoir so far. I mean, obviously, we've only seen one game from it in this format. True. But, I mean, this is just not a It has been awkward. Setup. Oh, look at that. Yeah, and Gustavo's going to try to save face here, concede this All game, right. and try to see if he can come away with the win in this one. We're going to have 11 oh minutes left for gosh. a game three. Yeah, it is going to get spicy here. Now we are going to be heading into a game three. Gustavo Wada just having such awkward hands all throughout that round two, unfortunately, and not being able to pull together enough. Blake Ray was already down to four prize cards left, leading in the race there. And yeah, we're going to see if we can try and conclude a game three. But sometimes what happens is the game three uh, gets a little wonky sometimes for these players. They could start with a very, very yep. bad yep. start, We've and it could end very quickly. And just like you said, Chip, before our game two, uh, or starting our game two, Blake kind of has the advantage if you're going to see a really explosive, yes. you know, first uh, turn or tr couple turns of the game to debilitate Gustavo's deck, knocking out some Ralts, taking away that total engine setup. So we're going to see what happens here in this game three. Yep, I'm excited, Boo. We'll see it comes down to this for these players in this second round. Are they going to come away with one match point at least? I think you can breathe a sigh of relief, especially yeah. as Blake, you know, after losing game one, you can be like, okay. He's going to come away with one match point, which is fine, but... That's huge. These players want to make deep runs at these events, right? They want top eights. They want international championship titles. And in order to do that, you got to get wins. Ties are not going to cut it. Yeah, there's a reason on this stream we are, are featuring the undefeated players, for sure. Because, you know, there's a ton of players out in the fields. And a lot of them are going to be looking to just stay that way. Go undefeated. Ooh, two rolls in the no. prizes for Gustavo. Oh my gosh, and two level ball. Yeah, what the? And a super rod and an Iono. Those are actually really terrible prize cards. Very, very bad. Colorus's experiment on Blake's side and that one of the two save a lie and a super rod there as well. Going into this game three, so really awkward prize cards, but hey. At least you see some Pokemon out we here on Gustavo's side. Yeah, I mean, pretty much all the basic Pokemon I think we're going to see. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Gustavo, I think if I'm in his shoes, I'm really looking to get Manaphy down right now. <laughs> Let's protect boring. these Ralts as much as possible at this point <laughs> well, using we'll, Mysterious Tail. Yeah, we'll see what we can get off of that Mysterious Tail. All right, and he, there is one of the level ball. There are two in the prize cards, but at least one here being found off of that mysterious tail for Gustavo. He has level ball. He also has Artisan. So it looks like we're going to see that oh, concealed nice. cards first. The thing about Artisan is, is you don't really... Oh, it also has there we go. That's perfect. That's perfect. Fantastic. Now, I will say here, Gustavo's playing pretty quick. I don't think he checked his prize cards because he's trying to play quick because of the time. Yeah. I think he's about to get the news that he's prized two Ralts. Oh. <laughs> Normally a player who's going to be very mindful, check his prize cards. He's playing quick, though. He, yes. he's, he's being mindful of the clock, so it makes sense you're not going to check your prize cards as thoroughly when that's the, the case. And so playing the level ball comes back to bite him in this spot. He'd rather have held that yep. that turn, try to draw into a curly. I have higher odds to draw into a curly, so then you can level ball for it after the turn starts. 
Yeah, and that is unfortunate when you have to play quick and speedy here in these uh, last couple of games, especially now we're in a game three here. We saw it in our previous um, game or Swiss round one match that, you know, you have to make difficult decisions and we ha when you have to do them quickly, things can get, get kind of messy here. Well, yeah, Blake just right off the bat lost zoning a Colrus' experiment. And it's kind of an interesting call. He had to debate between lost zoning the Hisuian Heavy Ball, uh, but he has not searched his deck yet, so he has no way of knowing what cards are prized. There is a Sableye. But yeah, but I have yeah. to think that Colrus is a little higher value than Heavy Ball. I would think so, too. Yeah, I mean, it's one of the main components of your deck for sure, so that is pretty wild to see here, but hey, we're at least going to see that Sableye getting drawn out of the prize cards off that Hisuian Heavy Ball being replaced with yeah. the Heavy Ball I mean, and that Colrus' Spearman on the bottom now. I, like, understand the thought process, right? If your Radiant Greninja is prized specifically, like, it's terrible. It's detrimental. True. It's, like, the most important card in the deck at many times. But get your energies in the discard pile so you can super odd and recycle them later. It's one of your better attackers in certain matchups like this one. So That's you true. don't want to run the risk that it's prized, but man, losing Chorus's experiment That's is tough. so, so tough. Yeah, that is very, very tough indeed. And you can only play one of those Radiant Pokemon in your deck. So you got to choose one, and that's the only one you're going to have. They have very powerful capabilities with their attacks and their abilities as well. But yeah, that, that was tough to see for sure. Definitely one of the, the most awkward uh, choices early on in the game for sure. We're going to see yeah. another flower selecting here into an Echoing Horn, and I didn't see the other card. It looks like a Super Rod. Rod. Echoing Horn doesn't get used all the time in the Guard of our matchup. It can be okay, but definitely not the strongest of options. Gustavo pretty much has to put the push the Radiant Greninja anytime Escape Rope is played, as it's the only Pokemon in play that does not get KO'd by a Cramorant, so it's really his only option. It's beefy. Yep. It is going to outlast a hit for sure with the 130 HP there. And, of course, yeah, Cramorant only having 110. We're going to see that Iono here for both of our players yeah. on Gustavo's side. As Gustavo, Blake didn't have the strongest turn, and he lost zone to Colrus. So usually when you see your opponent lost zone to Colrus, that's kind of a, a signal that they have another the, Colrus the in their hand. The hand is good, hand. yeah. Uh, so playing Iono is really strong, and so it means it's pretty likely that Blake put a Iono on the bottom of the deck. We know that's actually not the case, <laughs> but Gustavo might think there's only one Colrus that Blake could possibly have in his hand currently. That is very true. All right. So we're seeing um, that Gardevoir come out here. Yep, rare candy into it. Rare candy into the Gardevoir. Name a more dynamic duo, Chip. <laughs> it's pretty good right now in the current format. Just a pass, though. Gustavo had already retreated this turn, so he wasn't able to accelerate to the Mew, get back into a different attacker. So it just has to rare candy and pass it back over to Blake. Yeah, board's going to be reset here. Blake is going to start off with the concealed cards, drawing into an ad two additional cards. going to be Mirage Gate and a Poke Stop into a Flower Selecting. There's a Cramorant and the Raikou is the options there. Yeah, I think you've got to ditch the Raikou here. It's not super good. Cramorant is a pretty easy card to just take you a prize at pretty yeah. much any point in the game. Might be thinking that Raikou is a better option to keep around so he can force Seal Stone. That's, that's something that he's probably thinking through. That's true, yeah. Having to make that decision, he I guess He does we'll have see. the Seal Stone in hand. Oh, yeah. So Sheesh. that's probably why this decision is being made. Yeah, that makes a lot more sense. I think at this point... With that, it makes sense to lose the, the Cramorant so that you can yep. use Forest Seal Stone, get the Colrus. Yeah, and that's what's going to happen here. Cramorant's going to hit the Lost Zone here for Blake, choosing to bench that Raikou V, attach the Forest Seal Stone, and use it straight away. So this is the V-Star ability here for Blake Ray for the game to get that essential card, that Colrus's experiment here for Blake. And the interesting thing here, Boo, as well, is that this is actually the final Colrus's experiment in the deck. Blake played one True. turn one, one lost zone awesome. one, and Ooh. prized one. So this Colrus's experiment is the last, not only Colrus, it's the last supporter in Blake's deck. Sheesh. Yeah, I mean, luckily, after the Hisuian Heavy Ball, the Colrus was put to the bottom um, yeah, the way in the prize really cards. Yeah, yeah, so maybe Blake will hopefully, after taking a prize card, draw into that, which would be great, but we'll have to see. Uh, if Blake decides to choose from the left or the right side of the prize cards, or who knows? I mean, you could take from anywhere. It could be totally random, but that would be pretty awkward missing it. Take it from the top or something. So All right, Blake we're 
can still get to 10 this turn. Mm -hmm. It's a little difficult. Yeah. I think he actually might have the pieces, though. He's got double switch carts. So we can get into Comfey, put one more in. He's got Lost Vacuum, get two in, getting rid of the card in hand and the four seal stone, and that's going to get him to 10 cards in the Lost Zone this turn. So we are still going to yeah. see a uh, turn two Sableye, which is pretty impressive. That is very impressive. That's where you want to be sitting when you're a Lost Zone player. You're racing to 10 in the Lost Zone, and when you're able to get there, you can start aligning those damage counters on the field, and that's when you start slowing down your opponent. So it's very important here for Blake to get there. Only two minutes left on the clock here for these players. Yeah, and I like the decision. Blake did debate for a moment to get rid of the Kyogre. I think if you're going to close this game out, you need it. You're going to need it. Yeah, you're going to need multi-prize turns. I think I would love to see Blake use this save line, get this Manaphy out of here. There is, of course, an argument to just target down the Curlia right away. I don't dislike that by any means. Yeah. What you could actually do is you could put 80 on the Curlia and then 40 on the Mew so that Gustavo can't Psychic Embrace to it in order to retreat it out. He has mm -hmm. to manually attach for turn there instead of somewhere else. Yeah, that is very true. I guess we'll have to see where this is put. It's going to be the Manaphy getting to, oh, of course, that Curlia knockout. Yeah, top. this is tough, though, because this plays super hard into Psychic Embrace. You're just giving your opponent two damage counters to accelerate uh, or to place anywhere on the field. So it's going to yeah. be pretty easy, actually, for Gustavo to just use Cresselia this turn. Yeah, Blake taking a prize card. Was it the Colrus, Chip? Did you see it? I don't, I don't think see I see it. it no. Hands. No, I think Drew from the right in the prize card, so not drawing into that Colrus's experiment either. Yeah, look at that. It is still in the prize cards, unfortunately, for Blake, so even more awkward. Oh, this just feels almost like um, the first game that we saw. It's just an unfortunate chain of events happening here for Blake. Yeah, and that Cresselia coming down, Blake's probably thinking to himself, uh, no. oops. <laughs> like, <laughs> like this, is, the Whoops. damage placement here, it just does not help you at all. No. Yeah, that definitely does not because then you're just taking that damage. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that is not what you want to be doing. Moon Glow Reverse is extremely powerful yeah. in the Gardevoir decks, and we're going to see it be used. Yeah, Cresselia looking at this Sableye saying, call the Pokemon Center, but not for me. <laughs> Take this Sableye, move this damage. Now, the well, question bye. is, does he KO the Sableye or does he KO the Comfey? And I think it makes sense. Yeah. Get rid of this Sableye, force Blake to find another. Yep, that Sableye is gone uh, for sure. Uh, I feel like was the is the other Sableye? It's in the prize cards. Oh, but he did play the oh, no, Heavy, heavy Ball. Oh, no, the Heavy yep. Ball, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. All right, and so last it is not. game, he lost zone to Sableye super quickly. I don't think he did. I think that was last yeah, game. Yeah, I think I was thinking that. That yeah. it was in the lost zone, but that was last game for sure. All right, so we do have another Sableye, thankfully, uh, as an option in the deck for Blake. And it looks like time is being called here. I mean, oh, both of gotcha. these players at five cards apiece. It's still way too early to really call either way. And I don't know who would have won this game, to be honest. It's a little different than the game versus Pedro and Tord that we saw in yeah. round number one. I think Pedro was definitely going to win number, yeah. game number two. Um, but in this spot, I think it's very much either players. <laughs> Look at that what the stop. Three Getting energy? Rid of three energy cards. What? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, uh... Talking about a, a series of unfortunate events, that is just another one added to the list here, unfortunately, for Blake. Sheesh. Pokey stop. Love-hate relationship with a lot of our Lost Box players, that is for sure. Going back into the deck here with a Nest Ball from Blake's side, grabbing that Sableye that we said is now in the deck, rescued from the prize cards with that Hesuian Heavy Ball. So now he's back onto the field. We're going to see a Mirage Gate. Attaching to the Comfey for the pivots and that psychic energy needed for the Lost Mine on that Sableye. So we have gotten confirmation Blake is turn zero. And with taking the KO on this Cresselia, he does deal with it. But the problem is, is that he has to take four prizes now on his next turn. So, oof, I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah, I don't think so either, Chip. That, uh is virtually impossible, so. Yeah, and Gustavo kind of probably recognizing the situation as well. I imagine we'll see some pretty quick turns from these players as they're just playing to not lose at this point. And the only yeah. way Gustavo would lose would be if he psychic embraced a bunch of damage to this Gardevoir for no reason, and then, I don't know, pennied his Manaphy and benched his Ashen. So as long as